<laughs> so did, I just have a kind of a funny um, question because I, I remember this on, on when I first started coaching. But do you remember your first year of coaching when you're a head coach for the first time? Yeah, and and I'll, I'll tell you, it was uh, I did not realize how big of a chunk that I had bitten off because I was way out of my element for sure. I um um I remember um my my high school coach was Bill Ruth and and he was coaching over at Liberty and I was calling him every other day trying to come up with um just exactly how to how to run the team and what should I be looking for and things like that. And when we became we started to taper, I I went into him and um I knew what it was, but I didn't know what I was trying to accomplish. And um yeah, it was uh it was rough. And one of the best things he ever told me was, um, um, and, and I put it in my head all the time is, um, you learn to become a good coach by watching your good swimmers. Um, he says, they will teach you, uh, what works, what doesn't work, what to try. Um, and, and he says, you can learn a lot from them because, um, they're going to do what makes them fastest. And they might not even know what, what that is or why they're doing it. But he said, if you watch them, you'll you'll become you'll become a lot smarter. So I try to do that all the time. I try to watch my my better swimmers so that I know what works and what I can do for my swimmers that need a little bit extra. So, yeah. And and so um, I'm guessing the part of of why any coach hopefully is in it is their their personal emotional fulfillment from coaching. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I, um, I, you know, I, I, I want the, I want the, uh, the kids to swim fast. I want them to, to have uh, great times, and, and that's what's important to them. But to me, um, I, I get as excited as when, 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 one year when I was at Freedom, I had a girl who swam for four years, and it was finally her senior year, her last meet at districts. She was from the 500 and all she wanted to do was break six minutes and she went at 559 and she got out of the pool and she was crying and she gave me a big hug and she said, I did it. And to me, that was, that's as exciting and as, as fulfilling as it was when last year I had, I had kids uh, as state champions, but you know, every, every kid is different and every kid has a, has a goal. And when they reach those goals, no matter what those goals are, um, I become happy for them. And, and that's what makes me keep going because um, just watching them, seeing how much work they put in, see how much dedication and passion they put into the sport. If they really want to get their goal and when they get it, it's really, really amazing to me how, how that makes them feel. And I, I and I feel accomplished when I do that. Tell me, just take us behind for a second. The, uh, the scenes when you get to a swim meet, What's it like for you when we're talking about kind of a major swim meet like uh, states, things like this? What's going on inside from a coaching standpoint? I, uh, I I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to read the kids uh, as much as I can as often as or in, in the different instances so, so that um, so diff just different things I say. And, and I don't I don't try to, you know, I don't want to get in their face. I want them to have their space and whatnot. But um, I try to I try to pay attention to to how they're reacting to different things so that I can address those um, uh, um, quietly. But, you know, I try to keep them calm, try to keep them relaxed. Um, I don't really have a problem keeping anybody focused, but I mean, just keeping them on their on their race plan, keeping them in the in what we have worked on and what we've uh, paid attention to getting there. Um, so I, I just try to watch them and, and try to monitor them and then just kind of give them little pointers here and there. Um, but, um, but the energy in a big meet like that is, is great. And, and you want the kids to feed off of that, but, um, but you want to keep that, you you want them to keep themselves a little bit centered as well. Do you ever remember a time where you watched a race and you're so happy you had tears coming out of your eyes? <laughs> yes. Yes. I, uh, First, it's happened quite a few times, but the first time that that comes to mind when you say that is, uh, uh, I was coaching at Freedom, and um, um, my uh, my one boy Jim Jimmy Brockle was um, he actually won the uh, the hundred uh, butterfly, um, and uh, 
our game, our race plan was, you know, if, if you can be ahead at the 75, nobody will be able to stay with you on the last 25. And, and we worked on that for months and months and months. And the race was to be the 75. And then the last 25 was all guts. But if he could do that, nobody would catch him. And, um, and that's exactly what he did. He went all out for 75. He made the turn at the 75 and the last 25, there's just nobody could hang with him because his feet were so fast. Um, and, uh, and I remember when he finished, I was just, I had tears in my eyes because he did exactly what we had worked on and, and everything we had planned and everything we had talked about. And he did it to a T and, uh, and because of that, I mean, it was just to me, that was like the perfect swim. There is no such thing as the perfect swim, but you're always trying to get there. Well, he was as close as, as anything that I had experienced prior to that. And it's happened a couple of times since then, but but that was the first time. And then he went and he won 100 freestyle the next day. So um, that was kind of nice. So he won both of them. So, yeah. Rick, there's so many people that say so many nice things. I, I'm, uh, you know, in the area sometimes, and, and I just see that so many people say so many nice things about you. And and I'm wondering how you you have some kind of 